It is not today that we have been hearing that the end of times is getting closer. Whenever something supernatural happens in nature, society, or global politics, there are people trying to connect these events to biblical prophecies dealing with the days preceding the return of Jesus. And even though there are some theories that may not make much sense, we cannot deny that a significant portion of the recent events we are witnessing are indeed related to what the prophets recorded in the Word of God. And the most recent of them is happening right above us, in the sky. This is because the moon is literally rusting and gradually taking on a new color, blood red, something very similar to the prophecy made by Joel in the times of the Old Testament. The question that remains is, is the moon showing us that Jesus is about to return? Or is it just another natural phenomenon that is constantly changing? In this video, I will show you what the Bible says about the apocalyptic signs coming from the sky and whether there are reasons for you to be concerned. But before we start, I ask that you subscribe to my channel because every day I want to bring you teachings from the Word of the Lord in an easy and simple way. So just click on the subscribe button and activate the notification bell so you don't miss any videos. All right, let's get started. Brothers and sisters, the moon is rusting. Recently, news outlets from around the world reported that the moon is undergoing a process of iron oxidation, resulting in the formation of a mineral called hematite. This fact surprised even NASA scientists because, for an iron particle to rust, it requires contact with air and liquid water, things that science has already shown do not exist on our planet's natural satellite. Since this rust was discovered, scientists have been trying to find an answer to this mystery. As everything in science requires a logical explanation, these studies have found that hematite, which can give a metallic red color to everything it touches, is mainly concentrated on the side of the moon facing the Earth. This leads scientists to believe that our planet has a significant influence on the lunar iron oxidation. For NASA and other groups of astronomers, the hypothesis is that oxygen from the upper atmosphere of Earth is transported by solar wind to the moon's surface, where it reacts with the iron. However, other scientists think differently. They believe that the rust-making part of the moon reddish is the result of collisions between asteroids and the ice found at the moon's poles. According to them, this ice melts, turns into liquid water, and causes rust when it comes into contact with the dust and rocks on the moon. But is that all that's happening? And if it is, why is it only starting to happen now, given that the universe is thousands of years old? Don't you think that if it were just a natural process, the moon would already be entirely covered in rust? This is precisely where the prophecies about the signs in the sky before the return of Jesus begin to gain strength, especially because the Bible mentions that before the last days, the moon would take on the color of blood. The prophet Joel received the following vision from God about these days, and I want to read it with you. Pay close attention. The sun will be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Look at this, brothers and sisters. About 400 years after this prophecy, Jesus himself spoke to his disciples about the events that would occur on earth before his return. Let's read some excerpts from this passage. Nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be great earthquakes, famines and pestilences in various places, and fearful events and great signs from heaven. There will be signs in the sun, moon, and stars. On the earth, nations will be in anguish and perplexity at the roaring and tossing of the sea. People will faint from terror, apprehensive of what is coming on the world, for the heavenly bodies will be shaken. At that time, they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. When these things begin to take place, stand up and lift up your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. Look at this, brothers and sisters. Notice that the Bible, both in the Old and New Testaments, makes it clear that celestial manifestations are part of the signs that announce the proximity of the second coming of Christ to the world, and consequently, the time when the earth will witness the final battle between the Lord and Satan. You might be wondering now if the moon will actually bleed, as the prophet Joel said. I believe not. The blood mentioned by him in the prophecy is probably a metaphor to illustrate that the natural satellite will turn red. Remember that we are talking about a man who lived over 2,400 years ago and did not have the same scientific knowledge we have today. 
But one thing that is very interesting is that the first part of the word hematite, that is, hema, has Greek origins and means blood. Surely you have had a blood test called a hemogram, haven't you? Or perhaps you have had a hematoma, which is the accumulation of blood under the skin after a strong blow to some part of your body. And would that be a mere coincidence? Share your opinion on this in the comments. I honestly don't believe it's just a coincidence. I believe in every line of God's word, and not only this issue of the moon, but everything that has been happening in the world lately leads us to believe that we are indeed approaching the end of times. And it's not just the moon undergoing changes. The sun is also giving its signs. Do you remember the prophecy in Joel that says the sun will turn into darkness? Well, NASA has just identified a dangerous solar spot four times larger than Earth, which could represent a risk of very strong solar flares that could even cause severe damage to communication and energy systems on Earth, as well as increasing cosmic radiation, posing health risks, for instance. And of course, this is not the first time a sunspot has been detected. This usually happens every 11 years, according to scientists. However, never in history has a sunspot as large as the current one been recorded. And what's worse, it is growing at an alarming rate. We know that all these phenomena have a scientific explanation. But have you noticed that these events are occurring much more frequently and severely than in the past? And just because a phenomenon has a scientific explanation doesn't mean it can't be a sign from God. On the contrary, God is the creator of all things. Everything belongs to Him. And if today, humans can understand some things about the universe and nature, it's because He allowed it. See what Daniel said about the power of the Lord. He changes times and seasons. He deposes kings and raises up others. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to the discerning. He reveals deep and hidden things. He knows what lies in darkness and light dwells with Him. Praise be to God. It's happening, brothers and sisters, that many are ignoring these signs in nature, claiming that they are the products of people's imagination or exaggeration. There are still those who attribute all the signs in the sky to ufology, meaning they say it's related to extraterrestrials or things associated with the esoteric. But brothers and sisters, the Bible shows us that there are no aliens, but rather spiritual beings inhabiting the celestial realms, including the angels of God, and the fallen angels who rebelled against the Lord and are called demons. And of course, there is a lot of sensationalism when it comes to this topic. To be honest, I believe that a significant portion of the information about signs and strange appearances may not be true. But we, as Christians, cannot ignore what was said by Jesus himself. We must pay attention to the things he said would happen, even in the sky, because it means that the day of his return is approaching, and we need to be prepared for it. Jesus himself said in Matthew chapter 24 that we must watch and be prepared because we do not know the day he will come. But there is one thing we need to make very clear. Jesus doesn't want us to stop living our lives to keep our eyes on the sky all the time for signs. He doesn't want you to lose your focus, which is to live and preach the gospel. And before I finish, I need to make it clear that the things happening in the sky are not the only signs that the return of Jesus is near. There are other very important signs as well. Some have already occurred, like the rebirth of Israel, and others are happening now, such as wars and revolutions, natural disasters, the spread of diseases, the increase in sin, and the multiplication of knowledge. Moreover, there are signs that are yet to come, including apostasy, the abandonment of faith, along with the supposed revival, the global preaching of the gospel, the rise of the Antichrist, the announcement of times of peace throughout the earth, and the beginning of his world government. In light of this, I ask you, if Jesus were to return tomorrow, would you be prepared to live with him for eternity? Have you repented of your sins and believed in him as your savior? We don't know when everything will come to an end, so don't put off what you need to do now to secure your salvation. The heavens and the earth are already warning you about this. Amen? If you like this message, share it with as many people as possible. Let's spread this message of warning, but also of hope in Jesus Christ. May God bless you, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. A big hug.